Welcome to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. On this podcast, Laura and Shelby, both board certified nurse coaches, show you how to make as much money as you want in private practice as a nurse coach. Hello, welcome to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. Happy Monday morning. If this is when you're listening to us, it is Laura and Shelby here bringing you a awesome episode that we spent, we've been doing this lately, Shelby. We've been spending a lot of time mm-hmm. in, in the prep phase. So we're really happy with, with what we're going to talk about today, which is outlining the different success trajectories and kind of giving you some case studies without identifying people, but we're pulling from the over 200 case studies that we have and what success can look like over time. And our hope, and we're going to continually bring it back around to this, is that they're all okay. Like There's not one that's better than another. And if yours doesn't look a certain way, it doesn't mean that it's not going to, to ever become successful. And I think that we see a lot of unnecessary suffering. I just saw this on my January mentorship call of, I know I'm doing great, said the person who had the most powerful conversations in our whole group, in our whole big group, but it's slowing down. And I, I just, I thought I was gonna be farther than I, I was by now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, classic, classic, <laughs> classic. Yeah. And, you know, Laura and I have like an interesting, mm, like cat bird seat, if you will. We have this like really unique perspective because we joined nurse coaching. I don't want to say like early in the game because there were several hundred nurse coaches when you and I were getting certified, but it was, it isn't the same as it is now. Like it, there wasn't Facebook communities that were super talking about private practice. Like it was, uh, soupy (laughs) in the, in the beginning. And so there wasn't a lot of like stories or people that you could like look at them and be like, Oh, so-and-so did it. I can do it. Right. Like there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of examples yet of that, that were really out there or really mainstream or anything like that. So, Mm -hmm. and what I've seen over the past, gosh, five years is like Laura and I literally, we haven't been partnered together this whole time. We we built our own private practices and it was, I mean, we went out by ourselves and we didn't have the support of any nurse coaching community outside of our peers that we graduated with. Like I didn't know anybody else. There wasn't a hub I could come to and we had to forge our own path forward. I had to create Mm -hmm. what success looked like, what I thought it could look like. And since time has passed, you know, Laura and I have been co-instructors for the nurse coach collective. I have seen it shift from people being like, is this possible? Is private practice possible to now? Like it's turned to where there's so many success stories. There's so many different versions of success and how that can look like that people like new grads, they just know that it's possible because everybody's already done the work. We've already like paved all of these different paths through the forest here. And I'm hoping that like giving some really high level versions of this, like what success can look like, it just like opens that portal in your brain of like, oh, I kind of fall into this category. Of course it's possible for me because it 100% it 100% is. Um, but we do definitely see some trends, especially for folks in private practice who, um, especially because we work with people so long now that we, we, we ride many highs and lows with people and, and we know how it ends. Like we've worked with some of our clients for over two years and um, we even have data into the second two, two and a half year mark of what success turns into. Um, we don't just have our story to pull on. Now yeah. we know that our story is um like not everybody works with nurse coaches, so it's not typical. Uh anyway. But yeah, we kind of have a few different few different trajectories, if you will, to share with you today. And uh I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this. It's always excited to talk about our clients' wins and brag on them a little bit. Yeah, and we we separated into four categories. Shelby's going to talk about the first one because the first category is the one that kind of was the catalyst for this episode. It's 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 a very interesting uh, thing to watch and experience and ride shotgun with. So, first category is the nurse coach that starts out fast and furious, 
with a bump in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that bump can be three weeks. The bump can be three months. The bump can be longer. Um, but it's traditionally, and I'll, I'll let Shelby kind of kind of give her her case days on it. Um, but it's it's one of the ones we see that I think causes the most stress for the for that person in that trajectory because they came out of the gate so fast, had like several paid clients before they graduated. Maybe they even had like an 8K month or a 10K month, and then and then they're in the desert for like three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and I I love supporting this client because I know what trajectory you're on right out of the gate because you're having financial success like immediately. And usually this person will come to the calls and they're like, Shelby, I don't know how I'm creating all these paid clients. I don't know how it's happening. It's just happening to me. I'm not doing enough to generate the success because there's that dismantling of that success equals super hard, grueling work that we haven't untangled quite yet. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, they, they're in certification. They usually convert some pro bono clients to paid clients or whenever they put up the, the call for pro bono clients to get certified, they had an extra, they had an excess of people curious about it, wanting to work with them. And then we just start with that list. We reach out, we, we work the successful nurse coach method. We do a first powerful conversation and the proposals just keep saying yes over and over and over. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking of one person in particular at the moment, she did come in. She had a six, $7,000 a month before she even started the mentorship. She was a student of mine and she was totally crushing it. And it was really exciting, but I could tell that she was unsettled as their coach. I'm just like trying to be chill, right? Like I'm trying to maintain the chill of like, yeah, we expected this. Of course you're successful. Of course, like this is expected. Let's, let's celebrate. Let's keep moving forward. Cause I know that the speed bump, I know it's coming. Um, and it usually for my ladies that I've supported through this, it's, it's come at like the four to six month mark is where mm -hmm. they've like tolerated all of the celebration that they can tolerate and then they they self destruct for a moment, right? They they have a full blown like panic of like, how is this sustainable? That's a really big one. Is how how am I going to keep this pace? Um, they usually realize that their pricing is too low, and that's what fuels this like sustainability question. Is I'm going to have to have a hundred clients at this price to maintain or to get to my goal? And then like that's when we start tinkering with your price because you can't, you can't have a hundred clients one-on-one -on -one at least all at the same time. And um, it, there's usually a pause button that we have to hit and untangle, detangle kind of like the mind spaghetti. And then we get to move forward. And like Laura was saying, sometimes that's really simple. Sometimes it's one call that we panic, we get the panic out and then we move forward. And sometimes it's like three or four months if not even a little longer to where we're kind of like swimming in circles and the detangling process takes longer. And again, neither is wrong. Neither is better. It's all good. It's all good. We're all still making forward progress. And sometimes it's inches and sometimes it's feet at a time. But that's the beauty of being, at least in our mentorship space, is that you get support fully through that full freak out most of the time. <laughs> like we're able to to hold your hand from start to finish in that process. Um because we've been there too. Like we've we've we freaked out more than yeah. once for sure. Oh. So these folks have the financial success and then it's usually about building the capacity to enjoy that success, to hold that success, to trust that success um is like where the actual work is because we can create mm -hmm a six figure business, like the logistics of that are pretty simple. But if you are freaking out over your six figure business every day, it's not fun. And we really want your business to cultivate some fun and some joy for you to, yeah. to make you want to show up to it year after year. Yeah. And like, what would you say is the, is it the first no that they get or the first, like what, where do you see, what's the trigger? What's the hair trigger on the, the freak out? <laughs> It's usually when, whenever they get their first, oh, like what we would call it, Laura, like their first fast lane clients, someone that shows up in their DMs and it's like, I don't care what it takes to work with you. I resonate with you so deeply. I just want to hire you right now. That's when it causes them to like panic because that is not the successful nurse coach method, right? We don't, 
that's not like a generic thing that we talk about is when people just show up in your DMs and they're like, I don't care what you're doing. I just need to be a part of it. Usually we we teach the pursuit, right? We teach how to powerfully serve first. And, and so then that way the exchange feels real to where when someone just shows up in your DMs and they're like, I'll pay you 10 grand for you to help me. It's like, it's too much. <laughs> they like are like, what do you mean? I don't know if I can. I don't even know what your problem is. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and too much goodness. It's too, too much goodness. Too it's fast. too much good. It's too, it's too easy. Like yeah. that's, that's honestly like for, I don't know, the five or six people that I'm thinking of right now, that's the first moment. And that's like what cracks, what cracks the camel's back. And then, then we get into all the other stuff, but that's usually yeah. um, what happens. Um, Cause also sometimes those fast lane clients, they want in, but because they have no rapport with you, because they don't have any like resonance with you, you make the proposal and sometimes they ghost. And then that's also like compounding on sometimes they right. say yes. And then they're, they can be a good client or a crappy client. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. It, something about that is jarring that whole experience. Yeah whether it plays out or doesn't is, is jarring for people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like mine. I feel like you've seen this a little bit more than me, but I'm thinking of one in particular, well, two, um, where they just didn't get no's. Yeah. And then, right. Like they just had a lot of yeses in a row, like five or six Mm -hmm. yeses in a row. And then the skill of, of, of dealing with an objection or overcoming an objection, they've never had to cultivate or build probably because they had other skill sets that were so strong, but we know that really great clients still require us to coach them through resistance. So they have like five or six clients, zero resistance. Oh, and then they raise their price by like 300 bucks and they get their first no. And it's because of the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's just interesting because then I'll be like, it's not. And uh, you have six clients paying you $1,200. Like, do you, what do we want to do? We want to get to 10 people that pay you $1,200 and, and you're completely burnt out because you're still working part-time or do we want to, do you want to take my advice and we're going to increase your rate um, and learn to overcome objections. And then that, that it's the zero month or like the, the multiple no's in a row that it, you're just learning a new skill set, And that can be mm. really jarring because it's like they had success, but it's like sand through their fingers. It disappeared and they lost it. And how are they ever going to get it back? And they should probably go back to charging $1,200. And it's just yeah. predictable mind drama. It's just that there's, even though we talk about the journey and I hear our clients say this, they're like, I hear you and Shelby's voice in my mind. I know <laughs> what I'm doing. Like it doesn't mean, doesn't matter that I know. I still feel very deeply. I'm still yeah. having a really, really hard time. For sure. Yeah. And good news team. Feelings <laughs> are just feelings. You are allowed to have feelings. They are real but they don't really dictate anything, right? They're they're just feelings. It doesn't dictate a truth or a lie. Like it just is. And so the sooner we can just like be in the feelings, process the feelings and rely on actual fact of like, you have six paid clients. It's all like, if history is going to repeat itself, it's all going to work out here. You know, like actually relying on the black and white truth of it versus how you feel about it. You will get better at that. I've, I'm, totally talking to myself right now or previous version (laughs) of me because like the feeling I mean it's intense they're intense um they're intense rides for sure but at the end of the day feelings are just feelings and it it is okay and the good news for these fast and furious types um they generate financial success really quickly really quickly like they're there are people that hit six figures within their first year they're the people that hit close to multiple six figures if not multiple six figures in their second year like these are um it does not mean that the bumps aren't gnarly but they create like generic typical financial success with with seeming relative ease right like right. It, it that's not their biggest hiccup they they navigate that pretty easy um yeah. it reminds so- me of like like uh river rafting like that's our that's our stage five mm-hmm rapid riders and then we have um different categories like the next category we're going to talk about we don't have to go there yet is like slow and steady over time like maybe it's a class two but you still get there yeah like 
the water is still moving. Like we're still making progress. We're still going from point A to point B. Um, and, and it's really interesting because I think that <laughs> our brain tells us it's going to be a certain way. So we're like, it's going to be stage five. I know it. And then we're, we're doing slow and steady. And we're like, that's it. Something's wrong. I'm on the wrong river. This isn't the right thing. <laughs> I'm on the wrong river. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, I, and, and th- there's a lesson for each archetype yep. in both of these, right? So if you are the fast and furious type, it's probably because you're used to like pushing through your feelings, you're numbed out, you're burned out. And you're just like, I'm used to pushing myself to the limit. So I'm just going to push myself to the limit here. And, and the real learning in that is that you can learn to slow down. You can learn to operate with ease that you can take a breather and the whole ship won't sink. There's the learning in that one. The slow and steady over time is like, can you create peace in like the chugging along? Like, can, can you like show up to what is actually going on and not get super mad at what you thought it was going to be like? Because that's a thief of joy right there. Mm -hmm. So like, if you can just like get on your boat and chug along the river here and enjoy the birds and enjoy the little rapids and enjoy uh, the cool, refreshing swims in the water, it's going to be more fun. You're still going to get to the end. Like everybody still gets to party at the end. The barbecue will be there for you at the end of the (laughs) river, right? Like it's going to be okay. Um, but yeah, Laura, let's let's dive into what slow and steady over time can can look like because I feel like this one has quite a bit of uh, variation to it. Yeah, well, I think slow and steady over time. What immediately I think of uh, nurse coaches that graduated a few years ago who kind of just maybe they had one or two paid clients and it's been more of a side gig and they've kind of just it's not like they've been disconnected but nothing's really happened but they and then they hire us and. But like two years in, like, yeah, I should be much further along and it's been two years and, but they had, they've like done a lot of work and I have to remind them, like, you still have two years of experience of coaching. Like you're still coming in with more wisdom and you're a paid professional nurse coach. Like I have to remind them that they've been moving forward, even though for them, it just didn't have the, I think the sparkly pizzazz that they were hoping for, which is probably why they hire us is because they're ready to maybe start riding a little bit more, more rapids or to speed up the pace of the water because they there's a goal that they've been wanting and they realize it's just not happening as fast as they as they wanted. But I think there's also a timing issue. And I we just had someone join our mentorship that I coached three years ago. And she's in my inbox, like so excited. Like she just got all the books that we send and she's like, I got these gifts. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here. Because right this moment in her life, it's the right time for her to go all in. And it just Mm -hmm. wasn't. It just, there were other life things happening that needed more of her attention than a a stage five rapid. Like she just had other things. So slow and steady can win the race as well. Like we also, you see this in different industries where people say, you know, I, my business wasn't profitable for three years. And then I, my fourth year, I hit seven figures. Yeah, And we see this in the coaching industry too. So we just don't like our, our trajectory or our past just does not represent what's possible for us in the future. Mm. Um, yeah. Like incremental growth, incremental growth. And then all of a sudden you do have exponential growth. And just because you haven't experienced like the vertical line of exponential growth quite yet, doesn't mean that that's not right in front of you. So I think that slow and steady is hard for different, like it wouldn't have worked for me. So I get it. Like it just... <laughs> It would have lost its luster and I wouldn't have stuck in the hard times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think also like just calling out too of, yes, we work with people for a year, right? However, it's going to take at least three years for your business to become predictable, reliable, sustainable, all of these things, right? Like your first year in business um is really about laying a foundation and honing a lot of new skills, right? Like you're drinking from drinking from the fire hydrant a bit. And um, I've seen that too, of people who we get on an application call and they tell me what's going on in their life. And it would feel totally wrong for me to sell them into our program, knowing the time commitment that it takes to pull it off. Because at the end of the day, we want to set you up to have the most success possible. So if that means you have to wait six months and you don't burn six months in the mentorship, like spinning your wheels, not having enough time, barely making it to calls, 
uh, I think that is just really where you and I have grown quite a bit too, yeah. because you and I were fast and furious. We were all in, I'm jumping off the cliff. I will build my life raft on the way down. Yeah. That's our personality type. So we, I, and I'll speak for myself, like in the beginning, I'm like, hell yeah, everybody can build their life raft on the way down. I did it. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> why can't you? I did. And I think there can be some truth to that, but also if your marriage is in a rocky spot, if your kiddos are having a hard time at school or at home and they need some extra love and support, you, if making this type of investment right now is going to put so much stress on your family that like, you don't know how you're going to pay your electricity bill. Like it ain't worth it, sis. Like it is more worth it for you to take six months, know that this is where you're headed, right? Take six months, get things calibrated, go to couples coaching or therapy, whatever you need to do, save up and then, then be the fast and furious type. If you have it, you know, or, or still show up and just be like, listen, I'm, I'm committed for the next three years. And this is just year one. This is just the beginning and any success or wins I have this year, like cherries on top. Right. Well, that's Uh, a great mindset right there. Well, that's what, I mean, even, even for, for us, I'm reflecting back on my first year and I think I made like, I don't know, like, $17,000 $17,000 my first year, which is pretty normal. Like with all of our data that we have from our first yeah. year clients, like that's not a total loss like at all. Right. But, and then year two is like, eh, like 50, eh, somewhere between like 60 and 70,000. Right. Like there was a big jump. And then year three, that's when I crossed the six figure mark and year four, like that's when year four is like when we experience that like crazy vertical jump in the growth chart. Um, but had I experienced a crazy vertical growth right out of the beginning, I wouldn't have been prepared for it. Like I needed, I, we needed all of those foundational years. I wouldn't have been a good enough coach for that kind of success. I would have like, I would have been completely overwhelmed. So yeah, all of this, all of this, no matter what path you're on here is preparing you for the, for like what God universe, whatever is calling you into in a few years, this is, this is training ground. Yeah. And slow and steady can slow and steady can look like hiring a one-on-one coach. We can make a referral to you and, and doing some deep inner work and consuming coaching information and like slow and steady can be preparing to go fast and furious as well. I think that that's a really a beautiful, a lot of people who are listening to this right now are probably breathing a sigh of relief because Mm -hmm. I think that stage five rapids are flashy and they're fun. And I, if you're down to go down them, I would love to be your coach straight up. I love, <laughs> I love coaching people through that. Um, you know, Shelby, we could actually in another year or so with more data, have a different view on this, but slow and steady can also be a really strategic and powerful way to start this business. Oh yeah. It, it really, it like totally could. And I, I just think that we don't have enough data on that archetype yet to, to tell you what happens in year three. Um, but it's like the commitment it's, it's the, I don't know how I'm going to make this work. I'm still working full time. Uh, life is still happening to me, but I I can't stop thinking about nurse coaching. I can't stop reading. I'm still doing some pro bono coaching. I have a few paid clients. If that's your reality, that's awesome. Cause there'll be a lineup in time where, where you can adjust your speed if you want to. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I think also to the key takeaway here is forward movement, like yes, forward movement in some way. Um, and we'll talk about this a little later on, but it's, it's whenever you dig your heels in and don't move, that's the only way to lose. That's the totally. only archetype you don't want to be a part of. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we'll call that. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck in the mud archetype. I'm not sure, <laughs> but it, it's, it's an active choice. And, and really forward movement can be qualified as like literally anything, like yeah. anything to keep you in the coaching game, free coaching, paid coaching, listening to podcasts, continuously being inspired, being plugged in with community, whatever, like that's kind of the only requirement and yeah. it only doesn't work when you don't do anything at all. And that kind of lays the foundation for the next archetype, which is the mindset and inner work up front. Um, archetype. And these are our folks that don't get their first paid client until months seven, eight, or nine in the mentorship. And 
Um, they see their colleagues making money and then they have to go through the story and the comparison. And I have somebody I'm thinking of right now. I'm going to, hopefully she doesn't know I'm talking about her, but she probably will. But I, I've i just seen her, I have a couple, or like who they were on the first mentorship call and who they are at the six month mark is un freaking recognizable. The way that they talk about their, their reality, talk about themselves, talk about their feelings, articulate themselves on calls, what problems are solving instead of like really foundational problems. We're like going higher into different levels of, of, of mind, like thought work. And we have lots of people who make nothing their first six months and start earning at seven months or eight months or nine months, or even after their first year. And that yeah. just means that you're using starting a business to do all the inner work it requires. Like we're just using that as the catalyst to heal. Um, and we have other tools in our toolbox for the this archetype this year, which we're employing and we're using. This is a lot of times we'll refer out to, to different coaches to do some deeper inner work in conjunction with working on their business. Um, it would be where I would have been had I started my nurse coach business a year before I did. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And I'm, as you were talking, I'm like, I'm wondering what frame those clients have to build in order to hit go. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, it, and I don't have the answer to that question necessarily, but there's, there is a certain type of like evolution that has to happen, like a the life earthquake, so to speak, that has yeah. to happen in order for you to be ready or equipped or have the confidence or just like whatever the missing piece is to pl it's, plug it in. It's the fear of what other people think. Mm. It's that is it. I mean, that's the thing in my opinion uh, at some level, whether it be what their coworkers think, what their family thinks, what their nurse friends think, what they think. Like it's, it's a, uh, it's a fear of the identity shift. It's a fear of trying and failing. It's a fear of looking stupid or seeming salesy. It's, it, that's it. And then it's kind of like being afraid of the dark, you know, like if you don't just yeah. run into the dark, like then it gets fucking scarier, like the longer that you stare at it. And so I think that there's some of that that happens is that we build it up bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but, but then we do cross. And then when you do it, like, this is my favorite. Oh my gosh. I just had my first proposal. They said, yes, it was so good. That was so easy. I don't know why it's taken me so long. <laughs> Oh, it's too bad we don't get residual payments on that phrase right there because we would have a secondary stream of income. For sure. We should start charging for that phrase. We yeah, should, we should. It's extra. It's extra. It's awesome though. It's, it's um, or like the first time they do massive outreach without like overthinking mm -hmm. it, and then they yeah. get ten calls on the books, and they're just like, "Dude, why didn't I do this week one?" And I'm like, "Dude, I, I don't know. Like, tell me why so I can be a better coach." Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah. That is again, classic, classic, classic to where yeah. they like build it up to be harder. And so there's like 10% of my heart that just wants to hold their hand and be like, yes, we're going to send these messages together. Cause I know it's like such a nervous system. Like they're, yeah. they're so activated, right? Their palms are sweaty. They're breathing heavier. They're, they're talking really, really fast. And then, blah, 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 and, oh man, I just want to like hold them in that moment. And then the coach part of my heart's like, nah, baby girl, get off the call right now and go send 10 messages and then come and tell me how, how, what actually happened because we're playing the what if game. Right. And yeah. uh, it's not real. It's actually, it hasn't happened yet. And so then, yeah, then they go and they do it. They come back and they're like, I already have my first call book. And I'm like, I'm so glad that that took you 12 minutes and we already have a call booked. Like it's not hard yeah. or complicated. Right. We make it hard and complicated. We um, do. And we, we play with like workshoppy things where everybody does that together on a Zoom call because it's the, it's the big scary. The big scary is the invite. The big scary is, is the visibility. Um, yeah. And that's where we have to start. So I guess for this particular archetype, the mindset and inner work upfront archetype, um, the big scary is just they're not able to traverse it quite yet. There's just some other things that we have to do some work on so for them to take that first initial step, which is the initial step in any sales or successful business process. Um, yep. Same with the successful nurse coach process. I think when I go back to like fast and furious archetype, you're kind of on such a high 
you're at the, the top of Mount Stupid and the Dunning-Kruger effect. And you just think that the world, like everyone should know about nurse coaching and you'd be crazy to say no to me. And then you just kind of ride that stupidity into that first process of like the big scary. You just do the big scary because you're writing that, which is, it's like more power to you. Like that's the way, that's the way to do it with a little bit of like anesthetic, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like coming out of certification, you're kind of just like, it's the world is my oyster, like really writing that, um, And then the other thing that gets people unstuck is our retreats and the nurse Mm -hmm. coach conference. Something about the in-person stuff does do do, do the trick. Yeah. 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 Listen, team, like Laura and I love hosting our retreats once we're there. The prep that it takes to pull an in-person event off is so, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of planning, coordinating, et cetera. Like, especially because now our retreats are like, they're a lovable beast. They're, they're quite um, a thing to do. And to be honest, we probably wouldn't do them if they didn't work because they're such a labor of love, but they do, they do work being in community, being in person for a few days, hitting the reset button or putting yourself in the slingshot and pulsing forward. Like we put and pour so much into those thinking of the people who are actually going to be there and what would be most helpful um, each retreat has been different. So yeah, there's so much, we would stop doing them if they weren't so effective. <laughs> I know we've got one coming up in, as we're recording this, I'm looking at my calendar. We got one coming up in two weeks. Yeah, And I guess after running several, it's not as nerve wracking. We had our, our photographer cancel because she was going on maternity leave early and I didn't even have a freak out or text Shelby. I just handled it and got another one. And so normally- impressive. I know, because normally Shelby would be like, Laura, it's it's okay. And I'd be like, Shelby, there's no, I do the total freak out. So we're getting better at it. Um, once we get yeah. it down to a science and then it, and we can just plug and play, but they're epic. And that usually happens around, traditionally it's happened around the six month mark. That might be changing, but that is also probably why the mindset and inner work upfront thing can take the first six months because the in-person event shook up the dust and not got them out of their their normal environment um for a little more of the magical thinking to take hold and the possibility mm-hmm. thinking and the create creating ourselves and creating our reality thinking didn't seem like a bumper sticker like at the retreat it felt real for the first time <laughs> it didn't feel like a bumper sticker this episode's full of like good singers um yeah <laughs> and and also I think too of like Whenever you're in a room of several dozen people speaking empowering truths into your face for four days, like you kind of, you start to buy into it, right? Like, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's all of the doubt. Like we, we take care of all of the doubt or as much as we can, we wash it out, give it a good, give it a good clean. Um, yeah. So again, the, the mindset folks we're always rooting for you, right? Like we never don't believe that you can't pull it off. Yes. Your trajectory looks different. Yes. Your end of game or end of year, like success numbers, I'm using air quotes are going to look a little different, right? Cause if you start earning at the six or seven month mark, like it's just not yeah. going to be as high as these people who come out fast and furious. But if also, if you can have the perspective of like, I'm going to be coaching for the next 10, 20, 30 years year one doesn't matter. It doesn't like, it doesn't matter. Um, because your years of high income potential are to come like in year two, year five, year 10. Um, so it's okay. It's okay. Remember the barbecue is waiting for you at the end of the river. Regardless, we will, the party will happen. (laughs) We're we're all there. We have vegan options too, at this barbecue, everybody's taking care (laughs) of it's okay. What about this last one? And and we're kind of playing on the movie Failure to Launch, but the Failure to Launch. And I, I want to preface this by saying these are the the small percentage of folks that I don't feel like ever gave it a good like they didn't fail because they didn't start, and so they walk away feeling like a failure. And in my mind, I'm like, no, like you didn't fail. It just we didn't we never started for whatever reason. We just never started, yeah. and that's okay. Um, yeah. I mean, what do you want to say about that? Because I think that when I show people our income tracker, there is people have the question, well, how come somebody didn't earn any money their first year? And I was like, well, 
a lot of times those people still give us a five-star review and a raving review because we just worked on other things. And mm -hmm. it was the pursuit of starting the business that unearthed all the things. Yeah. So it was the, it was the tool for, for personal growth. We have a different policy around that now this, this year, just to hopefully give people the right tool for the right job earlier. Um, but what do you want to say about this archetype? And I think that this is the failure to launch is everybody's biggest fear too. Yeah. I love showing people our income tracker on our proposal calls or our enrollment calls yeah. because people are never asking me, how do I make 60 K in my first year? They're always like, why did someone make no money? You know, yeah. like they're always looking for the negative, for the negative. Yeah. And Oh, team, I just encourage you to like, if you're going to entertain the negative, also entertain the positive too, Yeah. right? Like I remember, I promise I will answer your question here in a second, but I remember yeah. on being on my enrollment call with Heather Lapidus and for, to get into the collective. And, um, whenever I asked her, I had no idea what nurse coaching was. I asked her like, what do nurse coaches do? Like, what is this application in the real world? And she answered with the most Heather Lapidus answer. She was like, um, really anything you want, anything you want it to be is exactly what it can be. It can be your own business. You can have a job. You can, whatever you want, you can create it. And I like took a deep breath and I was like, that is so relieving to me. Like I can create anything I want. And she's like, absolutely. And she goes, I love that you took that and ran with it instead of took it and sank with it to the bottom of the yes. ocean. Because I really, I don't know if it's like the growth mindset that I've had unknowingly for a while, but like you can, it's the same circumstance. It's your responsibility to bring it to life. Right. Yeah. Um, so that being said, that was a little bit of a tangent, but I do believe that our folks that get to the end of a full year and have not made any money either. It's because, um, it's kind of like they yo-yoed, you know, and sometimes that is not their fault and yeah. life just lifed like unbelievably and irrationally hard. And I don't really know why that happens yet. Cause we haven't had enough to where people say yes to their big vision. And it's normal to experience some life resistance, but to me, this feels like unfair life resistance. Yeah. And I don't have enough data to be like, but it works out in year three or four or five, you know, like I don't have it yet. And I'm hoping that we will eventually someday. Um, so there's that. And it's the kind thing to do to just change the goal, right? It is the kind yes. thing to do to continue to support them. And that might mean that it's not in our container too, right? Like it yeah. might be supporting them in finding the right therapist or um, giving them permission to like hit the pause button indefinitely too. Um, but also some people just genuinely yo-yo around. They stand on the edge of the pool and they dip one toe in and they find a reason why they can't. And then they stay on the side of the pool and they watch everybody yeah. else swim. And that is the most painful for me because I just mm -hmm. want to get out and push them in. You know, that's not, yeah. not very um, holistic coachiness right there. Yeah. But um, I had a, a client who did not earn anything in their first year, write me the most like thoughtful and amazing testimonial. Yeah. And in the, and I was particularly tough on this client because I knew that they are capable of really amazing things. So it was really frustrating to see them stand on the side of the pool for 12 effing months. And I told them that to their face repetitively throughout the year. Like, it's really like, what else, what do we need to do here? Like you say, you want the thing, you're not taking any action. It is unclear to me, like what the barrier is. And it turned out to be some like health stuff, some marriage yeah. stuff and um, being in a room full of nurses, right. They got the health coaching that they needed and they were able to lose a significant amount of weight, greatly improve their health, do all of these things. And in, in the review, they said, you were terrible at telling me things that I wanted to hear, but you were excellent at telling me all the things that I didn't want to hear mm. and all the things that I needed to hear. And I know that that person benefited from our year of coaching together. I And I know with 100% certainty that success is possible for them whenever they want it. Like they just yeah. have to, they just have to give it a consistent effort and not, they have to fully submerge and, uh, uh, and so 
even even with people who are toe dippers, I know that success is still possible, right? Because there's still even a little bit of forward movement, right? There's still a little bit of potential. Yeah. There's still there's still a chance that some stranger is going to come by them and push them into the pool, even if it's not me. Um, so I still have all the hope and all the belief for our toe, our our, our sideliners. Yeah, can, they have the information that they need now. They have our voice in their their head if they need it, like. Yes. At any time, they just have to press go. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of learning in that should should they choose to yeah. reflect powerfully on their experience and take radical self ownership of it. I also think about like some failed things that I did in my past and how valuable they were, and so I also wonder about that. Like, um, if failure is just failing forward, if failure is in and of itself incredibly valuable. And to be honest, a prerequisite to create a life, an extraordinary life. And Mm -hmm. um, so it it really all boils down to how you look at it as well. And like that client you were just describing, the voice of that she has in her head of you, like it doesn't end just because the container ends. So three years from now, maybe she does something different or, uh, has another crazy idea, an entrepreneurial idea, but like a lot of the same principles still apply. Like there's, yeah. we have TBD. Like we just, when we've been doing this for 10 years, we will have, we'll redo this episode. We will tell you, we'll add to the archetypes and we'll, we'll give you the, some of the endings because for, for this, for these failure to lunches, I don't even know if it's a failure to lunch. It's a, it's a different trajectory. It's a, I'm going to learn the lesson that I need in this moment, at this moment mm-hmm. in time for my soul, for my purpose. And I don't know what it's for quite yet. And the other thing comes to mind with this particular archetype is the conversation we had in, we, we have in our, our coaching container where we're in a community of, I think it's 250 entrepreneurs. They all have businesses that make seven figures or more. Many of them have $10 million businesses. And the question floats around every once in a while, like, can anyone be an entrepreneur? Do you have to be born with it or can it be cultivated? And there's like two schools of thought on it. And I think that as a business coach, that you should probably subscribe to the one school of thought is that (laughs) it absolutely is possible for anyone, which I believe. Is it possible for anyone at any time in their life? No, there is a timing issue. There is a timing. There's an alignment um, component to it. Um, And I think what we're better at now, Shelby, is filtering to make sure we don't want to take people's money and not have you make it back. Like our, unfortunately, the only metric of success for a business coach usually is our people making the return on investment back. And in our spreadsheet, we turn them pink. They get to turn pink when they've made back their investment with the mentorship. We have a really, really, really high percentage there. But for 2023, and I think we've said this, like, we want to have the right people in the right spot at the right time yeah. to, to, to do this particular kind of work. And I think we're better at, at knowing that on enrollment calls. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. So I think the big takeaway here, this is the one that you can write down and highlight and put on a sticky note on your mirror, is that no matter what trajectory you're on today in your business, it doesn't mean anything and any meaning that you, that it's having for you, negative or positive is of your own making. It is nothing has gone wrong. Last month has no, does, is not indicative of the next month. Mm. This is, this is the rapids. This is rapids. So there's going to be big rapids, small rapids, left-hand turns, right-hand turns. Sometimes you start floating down the river backwards and you're like, oh shit. Maybe you drop your paddle for a few months. Like it's, it's all okay. Nothing has gone wrong as long as you don't get out of the boat. Yeah. Shoot, you could even swim down the river. Yeah, who cares? True. Like who? Who cares? Uh, <laughs> you could yeah. lose your bikini top, and 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 I mean, who knows? Like it's 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 all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope that this continues to paint the pictures of just like how many different ways this is possible, and that you can plug in and be okay with where you're at and not be mad at where you think you should be. Um, Cause that just like adds a detour on your journey that you can avoid. If you can just show mm-hmm. up to what is actually happening versus where you think you should be. Um, 
as coaches, we know the word should. It's like a big old red flag. So nip that in the booty. Uh, but I'm excited also us to just have this like as a timestamp in our company's like existence so that we can turn back to it in a couple of years and again, provide a little bit of uh, some closure for all of us yeah. <laughs> of, of where some of these things end up. Yeah. So I think uh, these four categories, fast and furious with a bump in the middle, slow and steady over time, mindset and inner work up front and failure to launch. Those are the four categories that we've kind of come up with and all of them are okay. Uh, check and see where you think you, where you are, but more importantly than labeling yourself or trying to figure out where you are, I want you to check in and see if you are loving what is and being with what is and writing with what is with growth mindset, or if you're shooting all over yourself on a constant basis, Mm -hmm. that it should be something look different, go faster, go slower. And and we can help with that. If if you need some help, just call yourself out in the Facebook group. We'll lovingly uh, either be spicy or, or send you love. It'll be one of, one of the two. (laughs) All right, team. Well, thanks for, Thanks for tuning in today. I know this was a beefy episode. Let us know if you like the longer episodes because Lauren and I could probably talk for ever <laughs> if we if we wanted um, or if shorter is better for you. Uh, I kind of like, I prefer the like 40-ish minute episodes because yeah. I feel like it gives us a little extra time to breathe into it. But let us know what you think and we will see you next week. Come join us in the Facebook group the successful nurse coaches. And um, yeah, as, as we're recording this episode, if you are wanting to be a part of the mentorship in 2023, shoot us an email and let us know if you're wanting to start in June, we are already selling June spots. And if you're wanting to start in the fall or think you might want to start in the fall, email us get, and just say that you want to be on the wait list and we'll reach out to you when we are yeah. enrolling. Um, because that is where that is where we are at team and uh we have really big goals this year of breaking the 7 million dollar income revenue with our with our clients and if you want to be a part of that if you want to help us chip away at that goal we want you on our team we want to support yep. you in it absolutely all right guys see you later bye